Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today is a Try It Tuesday and we're going to be finishing off with the quilling. We have Celine with us here. So she's going to help us finish off doing a quilling project on a picture out of a coloring book. But first, I want to go through all these things that I have on my desk because some wonderful individual out there sent me a quilling kit. And I don't know who, um, so whoever you are, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, it came with all sorts of things. I'm going to uh, enlarge myself here so that you guys can see all the wonderful things that come through. Um, Celine will be in the background so she can tell me what things are and... <laughs> oh, well, I will um, attempt to. It comes with a wonderful little guide thing that tells you what things are. So let's start here. This is uh, called a curling coach. And basically you put your quilling tool, which is this thing in the do, in the in the hole in the middle, and you just put the paper in and you turn it until it's to the size you want, which is really kind of cool. It also has little holes where you can uh, put your tight coils and let them spring without, you know, coming out of that size. Uh, these are uh, quilling tools. There's uh, it, one paper tool. There's multiple paper tool. Celine, what do you use the really long one for? From what I've seen, that one you use to make um, long cones with. I've okay. actually never seen them in action, but I, I'm pretty sure that's what that's for, for making long cones. And this one here is just a really pokey pokey tool. <laughs> so Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, it's a dangerous tool because you just go like that and it's sharp. Okay. But uh, it's just, a, you know, just to delicately move things around when tweezers um, don't, don't work so much. Don't work okay. for you. Um, the tools have a uh, bit of a rubbery um, coating on them, so they do stick together. Uh, so if you get one of these quilling tools uh, kits, you may find that uh, your tools are stuck together. They just come apart very easily. Um, the other one of the quilling uh, turning tools is this thing here, which is an electric turning tool. And basically you put your paper in the little slot, hold on to it, and gently turn it. I I find that pulsing it works the best because otherwise it just goes wing everywhere. <laughs> it also comes with a, a lovely set of tweezers. And this is my set of tweezers that I had in the household kit. It also came with a good set of of, of uh, scissors that have a measuring tool on them. So I think that's one of the only reasons why the scissors work well. Um, <laughs> it has a measuring tool on it. Uh, this is a crimper. So you put your paper through the teeth, and turn the, the flower here, and it makes the paper all crimpy, which actually turns out quite nice. I did use that and I will show you what I've used all of these tools on because I have been using them. Uh, this is a circle tool so that you can let your circles expand to the size you want. Uh, let's see what else we got here. So this is a comb. Uh, Celine showed us the comb before and it's got little slots that you can measure your paper with I, I expect is that what this yeah. part is for yeah it um, helps you measure your paper keeps it all in line also I found sometimes it's it's also handy for when you just want to glue um, okay straight paper on, on the edges um, okay sure. yeah um, I've got me full screen so they can't see you quite yet so. oh that's 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 fine right. and they're what just, about the little holes on the back? Is, are they just little springy things too, or? Yeah, I think that's that's just another, another um, another another hole hole uh, another hole oil. holder, another spring holder, another another spring springy holder. And this is a 
this is actually really kind of cool. I, I played with this for a little bit, but I didn't make anything with it. Um, basically, what you do is you make your, your coil and you can press it onto one of the bubbles and it makes a bowl. Or you can press it onto one of the triangles and it makes a pot which is actually really kind of cool for making uh, flower pots or um, bowls and stuff like that, that uh, to make it uh, more of a dimension in your picture. Also, what you can do with that is see how you're holding it there. So you've got it, it the, the circle inside. Uh -huh. You can put, say you're making a flower, you've got petals together. Mm -hmm. You can actually glue them and hold them inside so it will keep the shape. Oh, nice. Okay. That's cool. I like that. Neat. Um, That's awesome. Uh, this is a pin, uh, peg board or a pin board. So when you've got something that you want to stay in the shape, you can pin it into that shape and glue it and it will stay in that shape. It's also got a fan uh, peg, pin here so that you can do uh, fan shapes. Yeah, it's like a miniature husking board. Yeah. And that brings us to pins. Of course, pins are necessary. And then we have this thing here, which is a, a quilling knitting board. Um, and it helps you wrap strips to create things like this flower. Yeah, that's the husking board. They call it a husking board. A husking board. Okay. Yep. It's a husky board. It's <laughs> and a husky it, board. It has uh, little holes in it that you can put your pins in. Um, in the the board itself, there's a little drawer that holds all the pins. Uh, one pin has, which I would suggest be, be your bottom pin, has the slot for your paper to go into. And then all the rest of the pins you would wrap around, which is really cool. And this all comes or came in one kit. So it pretty much sets you up for everything that you need or even don't need. <laughs> um, you know, like I said, you can use everything in your home. Uh, you don't have to buy um, a quilling kit at all. Like I said, some wonderful person sent this to me. So I want to show you all the different things that are available on the market or that come in a kit that allows you to pretty much do anything you want. It also came with a little glue bottle. I put glue in it. I find that uh, the little cap thingy here is useless as as uh, we won't say uh, so I have it's very useless yeah so I have a, a pin in the in the tip so that it does not uh, seal shut and I don't get clumps now these things here these are pretty cool as well um, they're border buddies is what they call them and basically you wrap your your paper all the way around um, and then glue it on and then it holds that shape so that you you don't have to do the pins really so you can you can make a circle border glue it let it set and then take it off and you don't have to have to do a, a border on the page and pin it in place and that sort of thing so we've got a round one a triangle and a square one that all come in the kit which is pretty cool and they all stack up somehow <laughs> <laughs> i know i had them all stacked i don't know what's going on here hold on no no it just said no. it's not gonna work now yeah there we go so they all stack together and i got some shiny dots because shiny dots are necessary <laughs> absolutely always necessary, necessary. <laughs> sparkles are always necessary there's also a little pan to put your glue in so you can dip your um, quilling project so for example if you have this little flower here and you want the whole flower to be covered in 
in uh, glue. Mm -hmm. You pick up the flower and you just dip it in the glue and put it on your page. So it works quite well for that. It also works to keep all your little tiny bits out of the way if you don't want to use it for glue. Now, I'll show you with this one here uh, how you would you could use this. So as Celine said, you can put it in this way and just push it in to create that rounded flower effect like that. Yep. And you would just take the paintbrush with your glue and just paint the glue in there and wait for it to dry. And then it will hold that shape when you're done with it, which is really cool. That's too, too small for that one. But yeah, it makes a, a little pot. Or if you, you know, and as you can see, I used the crimper uh, tool for this. And now I've uncoiled it. So now I'm going to, uh, you know, put that back in the bag and try to fix it later. <laughs> or not. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so also, you know, with these larger ones, if you want to take something this, like this quill here, this sproing you can take it and dip part of it and put it on your page yep or both parts of it or you know fit it all the way in there and just get as much glue on it as you can as you want to and just put it on the page which does make gluing these flimsier pieces a little bit easier some of the the more robust pieces not it it's not necessary but and you can, of course, do that with something other than a little piece of plastic that comes. All right, so those are all the tools that come with the set. Um, now, it also comes with, and this is the fun part. Um, let's put this back in the holder here so that I don't lose them. Uh, it also comes with the paper so this <laughs> is this is five millimeter paper and it comes in all different colors i think this one yeah that's five mil too right yeah yeah you should have uh three five and ten i think the kit comes with well i think these ones here all these main like single color um or color family ones are all three mil right or five mil i mean um, so that's all five mil. Yeah. And it's all different colors. We've got oranges, we've got orange to brown, we've got purple to black, we've got two different uh, sets of green, uh, red to pink, blues, another brown, another red to pink, another blue, orange. So there's basically two of each set uh, in the in the set here. And then we ha also have a longer, those ones are quite short, but these ones here are quite long. This is uh, one a centimeter or 10 mil, right? Yep. So this one is 10 mil and it's quite chunky, which works great for doing borders and stuff like that. Uh, this one here is the three mil, no, the five mil, which, is what most people use for doing quills and stuff like that. That's what, that's what I've been using is the five mil because this is three mil and it's really, really thin. <laughs> and I, I was worried about ruining it. So I didn't use any of the three mil. So it also comes with three different sizes of the rainbow um, paper as well each one of these is an individual piece of paper so if you're just using red or pink or blue or whatever you can definitely just use that color it's not all connected other than at the ends where you can just peel it off from so that's the paper that it came with it also came with a little card making uh, kit which you can use quilling to make cards 
uh, another tool for um, sizing. So I'm going to turn this over so you can see the tool a little bit better. Uh, you can just pin it in the center and let it expand to where you want it to expand to. And it also comes with some templates. So these are just little practice sheets that you can use to build a picture with. And it comes with all different ones. They have uh, the what you need to make on here. Unfortunately, it's all in Chinese. So it really doesn't tell you beyond little pictures how to how to do that. So but it's it's somewhere to start and it gives you a good idea of how to do things. So that is the quilling kit that I received. Um, again, to the person that sent it, thank you so much. Uh, it also came with these little wires, which I assume are guide wires uh, or edging wires, so that uh, you can make the the um, edge more stable, so it uh, doesn't fold over as easily. All right, so I'm going to bring Celine back into the the fold here. Oh, what you doing? I'm. We're gonna... Making tiny wishbones. Okay. And adding them to the outside of this. The picture. Picture. And where did you just... get the picture? What the What is the picture from? You know, that's a very good question. Okay. So. Because I can't I... remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, the, since, we've used this picture, since, we, so. since we brought it in yet. So the picture that we are using is from Coloring Book Cafe, um, one of their mandala books. And I do believe it was uh, their first mandala book. Um, which I can with hear coloring... Jen falling off her chair now. <laughs> yes, yes, that we are quilling a mandala. I have previously colored this mandala. So um, we I will be using the previously colored mandala just to enhance it with the quilling. So I've already done uh, the work that Celine is showing us now, other than just the, the basics of it, uh, with the different things that she showed us how to do in the first and second uh, video, uh, quilling video. So um, I have gone through and added different things to this picture um, myself and put it on a board now as you can see Celine is doing that on a cork board now what else could you use uh, instead of a cork board if you don't have a cork board at home to if, to pin to if you don't have a cork board you, you can always use um say um some cardboard okay. um that uh packaging right. you could also use um if you get anything from amazon some people might i don't know uh, <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if anybody orders from amazon these days anyway um you could also use something like this it's as long as it's soft and the pens can go through it should okay. be fine. Um, if you got tape, tape it to your table or whichever working surface so it doesn't move around. Right. Um, but yeah, as long as you got something to the um, pins can hold on to, it right. should be fine. Okay. So I have used uh, a piece of cardboard. And I pinned all of these things down before gluing them. Now, the reason why I glued it down is because we have it on a surface that we're going to peel off and pop the fully glued piece off to glue it onto the picture. And why do we do that? Well, it saves your picture um, from getting glue all over it, basically when you try when you're trying out um different oh words are hard for me at the moment if you um say you want to put a scroll down 
and you go, no, I don't like that. I'd rather put a tight curl down. Tight curl down. Right. So you can practice and move things around without destroying your picture from below. So if you right. were coloring it, and then decided, okay, I'm going to embellish it by putting a coil on it. And you put the glue on and you stick and then, to it and you go, no, I don't like that. You've or I don't want that ruined, there. Yeah, you've kind of basically ruined your picture because by the time you try and get it off, you, you, you've, wreck, you've wrecked all your hard work. Right, right. And yes, I am putting Celine on the spot because she's teaching me how to do this. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so in order to show you the quilling tool itself, the the electric one, because this does take a little bit of finessing uh, to do this without making an extreme amount of mess. So you put your. I switch you over to the close-up camera so you can see a little bit better. So you put your your paper into the slot in the in the post and then you put your finger behind it and hold on to your paper a little bit bless him bless you my love sorry about that oh you're fine and just try to not press the button too long so it doesn't spring all over the place like it just did for me so we'll just tighten that up. Yeah, sprawling is a new word. We yes, yeah, sprawling is a word that we are going to use often <laughs> <laughs> from now on. <laughs> so and you got a beautiful is... coil and just go sprawling. It's like, okay. Yeah. Put that there, that there, that there. Why did I decide I wanted to use? I've counted and there's 32 of these things. <laughs> and then you just take your little pokey tool here and you slip it under if you can and slide it off. Like so. And then we can bring that all the way in like this. Now, because I want to, I don't want a tight coil. I, I want this to, to be a little bit looser. I'm just going to let it out a little bit. Let's put it in our coil thingy here. And we're going, we're going to do a certain size. So let's do a number 19 so you hold on to it make sure that you're holding the the little flappy piece and you place it into number 19 and you gently let it go and it will sprung out to that size now you take your tweezers let me know if I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> I, 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 I will. You, you're doing fantastic. And then you pick this up out of there with your tweezers. Hold on to it so it's not tight or so that you haven't lost your sprawling. And take your glue on the very, very tip of your paper here. Put a bit of glue. Try not to put too much because it will go yeah, all with, over. With, with, with gluing, less is more, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. So I'm just going to hold my finger here until I feel that the, the edge is glued down. Now you can use all different types of glue. I'm using Mod Podge. Um, Mod Podge. And Celine is using Elmer's glue. So any white glue will work for as what you need it, it for as, as long as it can <clears throat> excuse me as long as <clears throat> excuse me as long as it dries clear okay. so you don't miss your workout now the elmas is normally the the one everybody works with 
Now you can take this and you can use it in the in the holes or you take the tip, you bring it up and you bring this down and you have a teardrop. You kind of just made a quiller out of you. <laughs> so you can check your size here. And it fits perfectly in this one right here. Like so. So I've made a teardrop, which is too big for, you know, anything on my picture. So I will put it in my special little bag of things that were too big for my picture uh, and save it for later. Exactly. Just going to make sure it's too big for anything in the picture. Ooh, actually, I can put it right there. But it does cover up my little flower. <laughs> so I'm going to switch it back over here so you can see where I put it. So I put it right in here. But it is covering up the cute little flower that's there. And I kind of like the flower that's there. So I'm just going to gently take it out. Kind, kind of kind of like that uh, you know kids game that we all used to play with the with the uh, with the edges that go Nye! every time you touch operation it. operation that's the one <laughs> <laughs> so you can you can fiddle around you can put them into into areas that you want it to be and the great thing with having the plastic here is if I had dipped this in glue and put this in here and went, yeah, I don't like that there, I can peel it out without causing damage to the picture itself. Um, let's see. Let's see if there's anything in here that I kind of like them all where they are. So so now as Celine is working there and I'm already at the point where where I want to stop. Another thing you can do, of course, is you can put them this way and fill in those gaps there as well. You know, there's all sorts of things that you can use these teardrops for in in your pictures. So while she's doing that, I want to make things a little bit prettier. So would I do the the embellishments now or would I do that after I put it on the page itself? Depending on the embellishment, I would probably wait until you've taken it off the plastic and actually put it on your up on your piece. Okay. Okay. And then do the embellishment because if the embellishments are small and fiddly. Yeah. By the time you've fiddled around taking it off the plastic. Right. And then fiddled around to put it, place it on your work, you might have knocked all your embellishments off. Okay. So, so what if you want to use something like glitter glue or something like that that needs to dry? I would probably wait until you've, until you've taken, taken your it paste off. off. Okay. Absolutely. Then we will do that. So while she is working on what she's working on, and I'll make her, uh, let's do this so that we're both the same size. And you can see more of what she's doing. As you can see, she's got pins holding her um, structure in place. And now is that because you haven't glued down your structure or is that just because it's not um, dry? Um, basically, yeah. Be because it, it wasn't dry when I put it down. Okay. So just to hold it in place. So hopefully, right. here we go. Because, I mean, glue doesn't really take long to... Too long to, to dry. To... <laughs> I should have waited because now all these are sprunging out of... Oh, glue. yeah. You know, you're, you're <laughs> doing other things. <laughs> now all your springs are sprunging. Um, um, sprunging all your wishbones are sprunging. Yeah, well, I haven't glued them down yet. Oh, no. The thing is, too, when you take your pins out, is to hold 
you paste down. Now, is that because the glue can get on your pins and you can end up pulling something out that's pinned and glued? Yes. Um, okay. If you've got a center on something, say a um, teardrop. Yeah. That you have a pin. In, oh, my fingers are everywhere. And you've in pinned it down like of, that yeah. in the center of it or even on the side of it. Um, you pull that up. You could actually pull the center out and it yeah. can be very fiddly and you go. And then you go um, throw that over there because I'm, I'm not going to fix I'm it anytime soon. I'm just going to make another. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. Oh, I just go. did that. So See, this I little machine. I just spent the last half hour putting that there and, of course, because I didn't glue it down. I'm not gluing it down because. Yeah. Okay. So this little Sorry. machine is the crimper. And what you do is you stick your paper in to the little teeth there. Okay. And then you try to make sure that you're going to turn it the right way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it just spits it right out. It just, oh. And then okay. once it gets in there, you just turn your, your little thingy. Try to make sure that your paper is uh, going through the teeth right. Okay, I'm just going to hold it. So I'm not holding it the right way. Let's see if I can mess this up. <laughs> uh, you'll be fine. I don't know about that. All right. This is a bit fiddly, but the outcome of it is kind of worth it. So. Yes. If you can get it started and try to keep it fairly flat to the bottom without pushing it down too hard. Usually, the quicker you do it, the better. So, there I have a crimped piece of paper. Now, I can quill this and keep that crimp. I've also crimped this edge here, which gave me that wavy effect that I wanted on this quill here. So it you can take good. your take your little quilling tool. Put your paper in the quilling tool. Maybe if I can see the edge. <laughs> there we go. And then when you when you roll it Try not to roll it really, really tight. Just roll it fairly loosely. If you try to pull it too tight, you're going to lose that crimp. I have found. I don't know if this is something that you should do, but uh, you know, I played with it. And this is one of the things I did. <laughs> it, it's all personal stuff for sure. Basically, it's just playing with playing with things until you find what you like. And yeah, you know, like I said, I'm just doing this very, very loosely until it's in a circle. You can even just get it started and then just do it by hand, like so. Until it's in, in the circle that you want it in. Like Since I'm pinned down, I can move it now. Why am I moving my head? <laughs> <laughs> you get so used to having something pinned down that you start stretching. 
forget. Yeah. Well, you I do forget. anyway, that it's not pinned down, that you can actually move your work <laughs> so you can see what you're doing. So now I want to do it into um, a little disc here. Let's see, I want it this one. And get in there. So I'm going to push that in there. And I should have glued it first. So let's glue it. So I'm going to glue this down. And then I'll put it into the edge there. Now you can glue with either just the tip of your nozzle or if you're doing larger areas like Celine's doing, you can dip it in there and glue or you can paint brush it on to the area. Now what she has suggested I do with this type of thing is we push that down in there like so. Get in there. And then we take our glue and we put it in the tray. And then we take our little paintbrush that we are using specifically for glue. And just paint it on there. To get it to stay in shape. Oh, hold on to your tweet. Hold on to your work. Yes, hold on to your work. Because look what I did. Oh dear. I, <laughs> I think that's a little bit too much glue for that one. I don't know. I don't see that. No, it's not because my glue's drying up. No. Probably should have done what is normally done and put it in a little, little, little pots. There's not so much, so the top doesn't dry out. Yeah. But I can be stubborn and go, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> now, is that stubborn or? It's not the stubbornness or laziness, one of the two. Yeah, that, that was the other one I was going for, but <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. It's either stubbornness or laziness, but I've got a feeling knowing me is both. It's probably both. I've done it okay. again. It's both. Because, yeah, if, if you do leave it in a big pot like I've done, the top does tend to dry out and you don't get as much glue on it as, you, as what you should. Just going to poke at this a little bit with my brush to get it to form to the circle. And then I'm going to let that dry. Okay. And Mr. Choo Choo's coming. Yay. And then once that dries, it'll be in the form of the dome. which is cool. So that's, those are different things that you can do with all of this stuff that came in this quilling kit. Now, while Celine's still working on hers, I'm at the point where I want to take it off of the, plastic. Off, off of the plastic and actually put it on the picture. So how do we do that? All right. Well, what you can do, let me just want to stick that in there. Let's move all your see stuff how far out I've of gone the way with mine, first. And I'll show, and I'll show uh, you. Um, I'll just chip this off. Right, that, no, okay, no, that was not, no, that's fine. Just tell do you have me a and I'll work it. Part, <laughs> uh, cardstock. Do you have your cardstock handy? Um, 
piece of car stuff? I did. I don't know what you, I did. You with did? That. Okay. Uh, I put it somewhere. There it is. So I've got a okay, piece of cardstock. Let me get my small piece of cardstock. There we go. And what you do is you carefully start. Can you see that? Start jiggling it and pushing and moving it underneath. Okay, I think my cardstock's too thick. Because <laughs> it's just pushing it over. Um, let's get a thinner piece of cardstock. <laughs> because, yeah, that cardstock is just um, pushing it over. <laughs> thinner piece of cardstock. All right. And then you just start to work. Sometimes it might. There we go. I mean, also the circles will be a little flimsy as well. And then you just slowly work, work it through. Okay. Come on, you can do it. It's just not, it's not going. You probably stuck it down now. too good then. But that's now that basically because I've stuck it down so good. You've stuck it down so well. Um, I'm going to do this another way, and hopefully this works. So I've got it on saran wrap here, um, cling wrap. Oh, okay. So I'm going to peel the cling wrap up. This means I've just used too much glue. Well, if you can peel the cling wrap off, that would be. But I want to make sure that I don't wreck the edges there. So I'm just going to try to peel the cling wrap up off of the picture and just gently start lifting it so that the quilling is lifting off of the cling wrap. There we go. Just takes a little bit of finagling. But yeah, as you can so. see, it starts to That's how you take it off. Uh, all right. So there we go. So I've got it off. Now I'm going to slip the paper under it. And hopefully not lose everything. Okay. So I have a couple of pieces that uh, move. Yes. Yeah, yeah, some pieces might might just move but hopefully the majority is here i've got i've been working on a piece for my mother's birthday here we go i'll just move this one over a bit this is a piece i'm working on oh my goodness for my mother's that's gorgeous birthday. <laughs> thank you um also, the trick is to um, to help with the gluing and for taking it off your backing, your plastic, mm -hmm. is to glue it on the, on the side instead of on the bottom as, as much as you can. Right. So that way when you do take it off, because I find it easier when I take something like this off, I think because there's more of it, yeah. Then there is when you've only got a few bits and pieces on it. Right. Especially circles and stuff. So now I've got to take my tweezers, wherever they are, there they are, and my glue pot and try to put these things back into position. 
So I've got one little one down here that popped way out. It's not even supposed to be there. It's supposed to be in there. Get in there. There we go. Now I'm going to put a little bit of glue in there. Glue that down. Glue this piece here back onto there. And one of these moved. Basically, what I'm just doing is I'm just tacking the parts that have moved back into their positions. Yeah. Just spritz this with a bit of water. Oh, this one here moved as well. And then we're going to put everything back in its positioning, like so. I think that's where I had everything. It needs to go this way a little tiny bit. Oops. Like that. This goes to the edge here. Okay, so I've got it all repositioned mostly. Now I'm going to take a pin. Where did I put my pins? There they are. And I'm going to put this in position there because the outer ring wasn't connected to anything. So yeah, the outer I just ring that with mine and I'm like mm, maybe the outer ring needs to be to be supported a bit while I get everything back into position. If that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm going to glue this to it where I've got these tiny little wishbones. It's like, okay, I've glued them to the bottom of the paper, which is uh -huh. kind of okay, but I didn't glue it to the outside of the ring, which means when I would have picked it all up, all those little would have pieces all fallen would off. So that's an, I think that's another thing to consider when you're gluing stuff yes. down. What's going to lift off where? Yeah. You know, and yes, you you could avoid this whole thing if you put things down without gluing them and then made your decisions that way. But sometimes in order to get things to stay in place, you need to glue them together to get them to stay in their position. Yeah. It's like that blue design I'm working on. What I what I tried to do was, yeah, I made all the um, the pieces for it, all the coils for it. But when I started to put it in place, they weren't in there and it was starting to move out of position. So I had to actually glue it together so I could understand where everything was what had it's to supposed sit. to be, yeah. Okay, so I have everything back in position, I think, the way I want it. Now, do I glue it in place or do I just leave it sit or do I just embellish it and let the glue, the glitter glue, glue it in place or do I, you know, I have a couple of different things I can use, one of which is a spray Mod Podge adhesive. 
um, it's an, acry an, an acrylic sealer. So it will adhere it and seal it all onto the page. Or I can, you know, just use glitter uh, glue, or I can use glitter glue, or you know, different things that to tack it into place on the page. Yeah, but just just it just depends on how you want to embellish it. Well, let's let's start with some I mean, you glitter. glitter. Yeah, yeah, you. Know, you're... Oh dear. <laughs> so basically, you know, what we've done here is we've created a situation where the page has been, the, the coloring has been enhanced with the, the dimension of, of the quilling. Now we can add more to that dimension with uh, stickles or glitter glue or even just glue and glitter. I'm going to use my stickles because I can. <laughs> and uh, I didn't mix any glitter glue, so that that's also one of the reasons. Yeah. <laughs> you can also use an acrylic glitter um, product or, you know, things like that as well. Uh, just paint it on and let it dry. So I'm going to use my stickles. So I've got this one here and this one here. And I've got way too much stuff on my desk. There we go. <laughs> it's going to hold the page down for me. <laughs> so we're going to start with this lovely blue here. And we're just going to drag that glue around. Now you can use a paintbrush for this as well. And just get that all moving about there. Now, another thing that you can do is you can actually fill in the whole area with um, a thick glitter glue and push it all the way down to the base of your quill, which will glue it in place as well. But that is going to take a lot of glitter glue, so not something I would suggest you do. No, unless you make your own. Yeah, if you make your own, then that's that's a different thing altogether. I'm going to move you down a little bit and turn on the light and hopefully not blind you. Hopefully you'll be able to see the, the glitter a bit as I put it down. Then we're going to use this one on the green. And my little ring got moved again. I might have to glue that down first because it keeps on getting knocked and moved. Right, I'm getting there. So I'm just going around the edge here with a good old bead. And I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to brush it on. So that the deeper areas, the tighter areas are holding on to that glitter. 
and make it all pretty. Even more prettier. Yeah. Make it all shiny, you know. And then I'm going to use this one, or the smaller one. And hopefully I didn't just wipe that glitter right across the uh, camera. <laughs> Like so. Now I have an edge there that didn't stay glued, so I'm going to take my regular glue and my tweezers and I'm going to separate them just a little bit and put some glue down and reattach them. And I'm just going to hold it in place until it attaches. Sometimes it takes a little bit, so I'm going to take a pin here. Oh, yes. It works. Pin that there so that it stays close like that. And then I've got the same issue on this side as well. What works, dear? Well, because the brain wasn't working because there's not enough coffee inside it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gluing in I was, I was gluing these wishbones down on the paper and of course mm -hmm. not to the circle, which right. means as we said before, when I take it off, the wishbone would have just gone and I would have wasted Lord knows how long how many, doing it. Yeah. And so I started to I used the uh, the card to take it off uh -huh. after I glued some to the actual circle and they were actually gluing and sticking. I'm thinking, yes, oh good, off. good. Yeah. Okay, and then I have another one here that didn't glue into place as well. So I've got a. Basically, at this point, we're just doing doctor work. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's what's needed. Now, you know, a lot of you are probably sitting there going, well, couldn't you just avoid doing that kind of work, the doctor work, if you just drive fit everything? And like we said before, you can definitely do that. However, there are certain um, aspects that require uh, glue to make them stay into the positions that, that you want them to be in. Um, such as lines and things like that. So sometimes not gluing it in um, place can cause issues like this piece here that has come out from the edge there. And when you try to glue them in place, you may find that because it wasn't stuck to the straight piece here the the frame it just ends up in your lap like that one just did now i don't know where it went and it's not a good thing because it's got glue on it <laughs> oh that could be interesting ah uh, yes i have no idea where it went i don't see it and it may be attached to me somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I meant that. I'm like, uh, where did it go? Where did it go? And I've decided, okay, I'm going to make something else. 
And then I stand up to get a coffee and I have a couple of pieces for Oh, okay, that's where it went. Luckily, I was lucky and it dropped onto a piece of plastic under my desk. Yes. And did not get all covered in stuff. Okay, well, that's the beginnings of that. I'm not going to spend the next millions of hours. <laughs> yeah, no, no. We were. Let's, let's, let's do something else. Let's glue this in. Yeah. So I'm just going to glue this piece in and then we're going to embellish it a little bit more. And then I'm going to give it a bit of a spritz. And then we'll see how it looks. Because that's what we can do. <laughs> exactly. And basically all we're doing at this point is just making it uh, look as pretty as, as you know, you want it to be. And showing you that you can take this type of coloring and not only color directly on a blank sheet and make that um, picture completely with nothing but quilling, which is what Celine's doing. Or you can do what I've done here and actually color it and then add the quilling to embellish. Now my coil here isn't glued down because it decided not to, so. So I could try and do. Okay. I'm going to stick that down right there. Whoopsies. But basically what, what I was, one of the things that I was trying to show was that you can take just a, a colored page and add dimension and interest um, just by adding some coils and rounds and teardrops and everything else, adding a bit of glitter to it, making it all sparkly, you know, because everything's wonderful with glitter. Come on now. Oh, Lord, yes. Yeah, oh, oh, yes. You know, and just enhancing and in there we go. enjoying the dimension that you've created Let's do. with the quill. And like I said, you can easily do an entire page just with quilling as Celine is doing and has done previously. Or you can just take a page that you've already done or a page that you've colored or want to color, color things in and add some flowers or add some some swirls and, you know, create that extra, extra dimension, extra interest right. on your page. I do. Okay. You okay over there, Cole? There we go. Are you doing okay? Me? You're, yeah, you're talking to yourself there, dear. <laughs> yeah, sorry. sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's when the brain starts working, you're like, I wonder yep. if, I wonder if, I wonder if. And then, yep. as you can just tell, I'm, I'm talking to myself. You go into the wonder ifs. <laughs> I go into the wonder ifs, and then my table starts looking like, I like, like mine. <laughs> yeah. Basically. You don't want to see what mine looks like right now, I'm telling you. Uh, mine, mine's, um, yeah. See, the other thing, too, with my table, because I also use it for drawing and for coloring, it's at a, it's at a um, bit of a slope. Oh, yeah, you have an angled table, that's right. So it's angled. And so when I put something up, it's like what I did, I don't know, some people might have seen it, is I had my pot of glue here and it just slid down and just knocked <laughs> the circles and I'm like, okay, oh, no. fine. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Um, That's the joys so of 
And a lot of people do actually have a, a tipped desk like that. So if you do have a tip desk like that and you want to do this sort of thing, what is the best way to to position yourself on your desk? Like my desk is flat, so you know, getting um, everything to lay flat is pretty simple for me, but what I have found um especially if you're doing this, yes, get yourself a fairly I mean, my corkboard is, I don't know if I can really see, it's, oh, look, there's my table. Sorry for making people sick. <laughs> it's um, a fairly sizable corkboard. Yeah. Corkboard. Sorry, I'm, making, I'm probably making people ill now. Yeah. Um, so it would be advisable, yes, get yourself a corkboard. And what I found helps if I use the pins. And I stick the pins in at intervals, then my things don't go rolling off like right. my tweezers or my pokey tool. Oh, okay. Awesome idea. Yeah, that's cool. You know, and, or you, you can see that? Yeah. Or here, yeah, which is <laughs> bent pins. you got to love them. This corkboard is pretty um, cheap, so every time I put a pin in, take it out, I take the glue and the cork out with it. Um, oh. But yeah, you can, and even a heavy pot of excuse my fingers, heavy pot of glue, it's stopped by a couple of pins. So that's that's one way you could stop things from um, <laughs> sliding down into your work. Yeah. Ah, the the pins is is an awesome idea. I didn't even think of that. Like, to be brutally honest, I didn't think of it until I actually saw it when I had just put pins there. I put one <laughs> of my tools there, and the pin stopped. And I'm going, cool. That's cool. <laughs> awesome. I'm so glad I thought of it. <laughs> I thought of that all the time. That was just <laughs> that was just a bonus. It was just a bonus, you know. I knew that was going to happen. Um, I could use... Can I use that? Yes, I can. Okay. I'm going to try and make a flower. Um, and show you... You know what I was saying before about using the inside of the mould? Uh-huh. So here's a tight coil. Oh, good lord. Sorry, I'm out of frame again. Making people ill. Here, Here's a tight coil. I'll, I'll make you larger. Is, <laughs> please don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't need to be any bigger. <laughs> don't need to be any bigger. Here, here's one I made before. Here's one I made earlier. This is a tight coil. This uh -huh. got a couple of colors in it. Right. So what I was thinking on doing was using one of these smaller nobules. Oh, here we uh -huh. go. Because you can use different sizes. Right. So that's the, basically what that will be, I'm hoping, is, that looks terrible, center of the flower. Uh-huh. Looks terrible. Do it the <laughs> other way so that it's, it. yeah, like that. Um, uh, so yeah, okay. I might just glue that in place to stop. The small, just to stop it from pushing it back in on itself. Right. Right. I'll put that to one side and let that dry. Just use simple teardrops. My brain's going. Let's let's make this really ultra fancy, and I'm just trying to show something. <laughs> No, I just, want it to be extra pretty. More, I want it to be extra pretty, extra fancy, you know. Uh, I do just, just do things. Um, yeah, I am. I'm going to make this extra fancy. I'm just, I'm overdoing it. <laughs> Which is what? 
you do. Not necessary, but it's not necessary. Of course not. So this is how you get a dirty table. Uh, messy table. <laughs> if you want to go overboard, if you want to go overboard. This is how you do this it. This is how you do it. In case you weren't aware, <laughs> this is something that can be done and is done often. <laughs> and very, very easily. Oh, here's your tail. It's one. It's a bit thick. Because the, the other thing with your work is... Though it's three dimensions, it doesn't have to be on the one level. Yeah, you can add different different heights and you different. Can, yeah, you can add different heights to it, which is basically what I'm going to attempt to do. Now, you don't really have to measure this with some templates it says okay you need x amount of x amount of length which is actually what i'm uh, working on for my mother for her birthday right uh, that's half so i need a quarter All right, quarter of that one, half of that one, that's that one, that one, and half of that one. Definitely taking this way too far. <laughs> That's what it's all about, though. Well, I've got the glitter on. <laughs> yeah, yay. So I'll switch back over here so you guys can see the glitter. Oh, yes, must see the glitter. So as you can probably see, I'll tip it this way. Nope, this way. <clears throat> I'm going to move my glitter. So I can lift up the page and show you the glittery bits and how this page is going to look once everything is glued down. Maybe. There we go. So as you can probably see, all of the glittery bits. Oh, there. A oh, yes. Oh, I like it. And it That's adds really that that bit of shine to it. Because when I colored this originally, I colored it with markers as well as glitter gel pens. So there's different areas that have glitter gel pen on them already. Like the outer ridge here is marker and gel and glitter gel pen. That's why I'm not adding anything to that. Is because it's already got that bit of sparkle where the inside was mostly just marker work. So adding that extra dimension and adding that bit of glitter gives that center area a bit of a bit of a an, a, an oomph, so to speak. So now I'm going to let that dry. And uh, well, then once yeah. once that's dry, then I'll spray it with the with the fixative and adhere it to the page. Now, our little coil that we glued into the pot is all dry now. So when it's done, it stays in this shape. And if you, I did this in yellow or orange, I could have made a smaller one and did the center of a flower with it and given it the dimension, the height dimension of that bowl. Or I can put it this way and give height dimension of an actual bowl on a table or something. 
Oh, that did not turn out the way I would hello. wanted it to. Wanted it to, but it's something that you. I'm actually going to keep because one of my papers is actually a little, for some reason, a little thicker than the yeah. others. And when I joined it together with the glue, And I coiled it up. Part of it did not uncoil. I see that. So it's actually turned into. That looks really cool, actually. I like it. So then I'm thinking, okay. Just use so the it's just a... there are no there are no uh, failures. Always just yeah. happy accidents. So. I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I thought that was cool. Yeah, that is cool. All right. I would, having done that, knowing that that paper is too thick for some reason, I don't know why. Probably so, came from a different manufacturer. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Or, or it was just a thicker paper. So once this is all dry, and it'll take a while for this glitter uh, to dry. Once it is dry, I will finish it off, glue it onto this paper, and then take a picture of it and post it on Instagram. Um, Celine, like I said, is doing the entire picture. Uh, so once she does get that done, which will take a lot longer than what I've got done. Um, yeah, it'll take a while. Once she gets that entire picture done, of course, you know, make sure that you have her on Instagram and take a look and look at her Instagram. Um, my biggest thing with the quilling, uh, when we first started, when we first, when we did our first couple of videos, is A, you don't have to buy all of this stuff. Um, you know, the quilling kit that I have was gifted to me, uh, and I thank that person very, very much. However, you don't have to have that in order to create, um, in order to color with paper. Uh, you can definitely do that with strips of construction paper, strips of um, craft paper that you have in your in your craft bins. You don't have to use quilling, quote unquote, no. quilling paper. You I've don't have to use. People. You don't have to use a quilling comb. You can use it, an actual comb, like this piece here, was done with an actual comb, uh, one that you use for your hair. You don't need a quilling comb to do this type of quilling. Um, crimping you can if you're fiddly enough you can you can sit there and do bendy 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 foldy 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 to get your crimp as well so you don't need a crimping machine either there are many different aspects to quilling that i think will enhance your coloring pages um add dimension uh is one of them you can definitely do different layers different heights and of course different colors and adding different glues and that sort of thing which is great so i think it has been a success uh, with quilling on top of a colored pi picture to enhance the colored picture as you can see you can still see the picture itself under the quill so i haven't covered it up i've just enhanced it with that dimension this should be in a little bit more like that <laughs> now that i can see it on the screen <laughs> so we haven't changed the picture we've just added to it to give it some dimension and some interest all right guys so um that is it for me Celine. is there anything else you want to tell everyone or let everyone know of um specifics that you would make sure that you you kept in mind while you were quilling or um, not really it, it's all up to your to your imagination um mm -hmm. if you find it difficult with imagination like i do because i actually have aphantasia 
So when you see some, I can't see anything. You know, when somebody says, "In your mind's eye," I, I don't. I can't. Her her so mind's eyes blind. My mind's eyes actually blind. So go to um, have a look for quilling projects. Um, Pinterest is a good thing, um, and you see what other people have done, and you can work off of that. Okay. Um, another another thing that's really cool is these templates. Yes, templates are a wonderful thing because it helps you. It gives yeah. you um, practice size you can work with. Yes, and practice. And basically just have fun and let go. Like I've started doing this and gone off on a different tangent altogether. So let yourself have fun. Awesome. Exactly. And and that's always the most important um, aspect to anything is don't overthink it. Enjoy it while you're doing it. Enjoy the process. And don't worry about how it looks while it's going on because even quilling has the ugly teenage stage. Just saying. Yeah. Um, Just saying. <laughs> I, I, I have uh, I have gone through the ugly teenage stage a couple of times with my quilling and uh, quilling of this picture and gone oh it's it's horrible it's disgusting it's horrible and thought of just throwing it out and Celine wouldn't let me so no nope I said keep going keep going and so I did it. and as you can see it turned out quite quite nice. It turned out absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Celine says it's gorgeous, but I it's think gorgeous. it's just quite nice. It's gorgeous. But it, it turned out quite well for um, for it being a mandala. And for the <laughs> fact this is your very first time in doing it. Exactly. Yeah, this is you the know, first so time I've ever quilled anything. <laughs> so in what, a month? Yeah, and so, of course I was I was sick for half of that. So exactly, <laughs> and I just find it easy. Okay, it's frustrating at times, sure, but it's also relaxing. You know, you just get your your cooling tool and your bit of paper and sit down and watch Renee and quill. Coils, tight coils, loose coils, make them into teardrops. And before you know it, you have this whole bunch of things. And just put it together on a piece of paper and do abstract. It doesn't have to be something that's, you perfect. know, yeah, perfect, or it doesn't have to be a bird or. A mandala or whatever. It doesn't have it to be just... a picture. It can be whatever it is. Exactly. Yeah. So that is our final thoughts on quilling and utilizing quilling not only as an enhancement to your projects, but as your project in, in a whole. Um, it adds dimension. It adds uh, physical and and visual effect to a project, whether it be a coloring project like mine is, or a full project um, like Celine's is. And they're they're actually really really pretty. And the more you build with them, and the more you you get comfortable with playing with paper. Uh, Celine has done some absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous pictures, um, which I keep on telling her to to sell them, but she, she refuses. <laughs> um, yeah, she keeps on doing that, you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but but she does some some absolutely beautiful work with uh, playing with paper, and you can, of course, purchase the quilling paper on Amazon. You can purchase the full quilling kit on Amazon. So if you're having troubles with, um, you know, just enhancing your pictures, 
this is definitely one way that you can do that. You can add a couple of teardrops or a couple of flowers to a, a page just to make them stand out. All right, guys, with that, I would like to say thank you very much, Celine, for joining me. Again, whoever sent this wonderful quilling kit, thank you so much. It has been very helpful in uh, creating this masterpiece. I yes, will, I will definitely call masterpiece. It. <laughs> uh, so I, I thank you very much for, for sending that to me. Um, of course, always remember to like, comment, and subscribe to any YouTube artists that you enjoy. Not only does this help out with our self-esteem, because you know we all we all have self-esteem issues. Uh, nothing is ever good enough. Um, <laughs> it's very true. But it also helps us out with our channel analytics. So what that means is that YouTube will send uh, more people to come and check out our channels, and hopefully, uh, you know hit that subscribe button and hang around for a while. Other than that, always remember to relax, color, even with paper, and stay <laughs> safe, everyone. Until next time, bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.